Welcome to session number three of God's Wisdom for Marriage. This is the life-giving network. Our main mission is to train the leaders all over the world how to grow healthy churches that love the lost people to Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Ken Wanyonyi, the master trainer of the life-giving network Nairobi, Kenya. In session number three of God's Wisdom for Marriage, we are going to look at loving partner in parenting. Loving partner in parenting. Another way to build a marriage and family that God blesses is to be a loving parent. Another way to build a marriage and a family that God blesses is to be a loving parent parent. A healthy marriage is the foundation for a healthy family. A healthy marriage is the foundation for a healthy family. Not every marriage results in children. And in those cases, please consider adoption as a wonderful way to grow as a family and provide care for vulnerable children. Not every marriage results in children. And in those cases, please consider adoption as a wonderful way to grow as a family and provide care for vulnerable children. In the book of Psalm chapter 127, verse 3 to 5, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, and Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, are all verses that instruct us about the value of parenting and growing a family. There are three main things that every child needs. There are three main things that every child needs. Number one, a sense of belonging. Every child needs to know that they belong in the family, that their uniqueness is part of what makes the family unique. and that they have safety and value, a sense of belonging. Every child needs to know that they belong in the family, that their uniqueness is part of what makes the family unique, and that they, they, are, they have safety and they have value in that particular family. Number two, a sense of worthiness. Of course, their ultimate worth comes from understanding their identity in Christ. We can also communicate value and build their, their, their self-worth by praising them and giving constructive feedback for improvement. The world will speak negative, destructive idea, ideas. We need to more. We need to more than make up for that with truthful positivity. Of course, the ultimate worth comes from understanding their identity in Christ. We can also communicate value and build their self-worth by praising them and giving constructive feedback for improvement. The world will speak negative and destructive ideas. We need to more than make up for that with the truthful positivity. Number three, a sense of competence. When they do well, we must praise them. Even if they fail, we can still praise the effort and encourage them to try again. This is how all of us gained skills, by trial and error, and watching others doing it, 
One of the main goals of parenting is to build competence in every area of life so they can be capable, fruitful, confident adults one day, one time. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. A sense of competence. When they do well, we must praise them. Even if they fail, we can still praise the effort and encourage them to try again. This is how all of us gain the skills. By trial and error and watching others doing it. One of the main goals of parenting is to build competence in every area of life so they can be capable, fruitful, confident adults one day, one time. Here are three mistakes parents commonly make. Here are three mistakes parents uh, commonly make. Number one. Over, over protect while your intentions are often good wanting to protect our children from pain if we never let them make mistakes or experience the real world they will not be equipped to deal with it, with it when we are gone and we are actually harming them more than helping them I am talking about three mistakes that many parents commonly make. Number one, overprotect. While our intentions are often good, wanting to protect our children from pain, if we never let them make mistakes or experience the real world, they will not be equipped to deal with it when we are gone. And we are actually harming them more than helping them. Number two, overcorrect. Children need much correction. But when we exaggerate them by criticizing every small thing before they've even had the opportunity to fix their first thing, they'll give up, thinking you are impossible to please, for they are completely failures. Give correction. Speak the truth in love, but also in a way that they can digest. I'm talking about three mistakes many parents commonly make. Number two, overcorrect. Children need much correction, but when we exasperate them by criticizing every small thing, before they are even had an opportunity, they have even had an opportunity to fix the first thing, they will give up, thinking you are impossible to please, or they are completely failures. Give corrections, speak the truth in love, but also in a way that they can digest. Number three, Overindulge. Overindulge. Again, this is often born from love. But when we can't say no or give them too many things which aren't good for them, we are not loving them well. This can happen when you have a lot more money than your parents had and then because you you suffered from lack you are so determined to know to, to not allow your children to suffer that you are that you overcompensate and never let them earn for themselves or experience the importance of delayed gratification grandparents can get away with this in moderation but when parents also do it children will will be weaker not stronger 
Ephesians 6, 4. It's a key verse here. Bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. I'm talking about three mistakes that many parents commonly make. Number three, overindulge. Again, this is often born from love. But when we can't say no, or give them too many things which aren't good for them, we are not actually uh, loving them well. This can happen when you have a lot of money than your parents had. And then because you suffered from luck, you are so determined to not allow your children to suffer that you overcompensate and never let them earn for themselves or experience the importance of delayed gratification. Grandparents can get away with this in moderation, but when a parent also do it, children will, will, will be weaker and not stronger. Ephesians 6 4 says, Bring them up in the discipline and instructions of the Lord. Yeah. Bringing out the best in kids. That's a, another subtopic right there. Bringing out the best in kids. Number one, accept their uniqueness completely. Even identical twins have thousands of differences. No one has the same handprint, fingerprint, voice print, retina scan. We are all unique. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2.10 This word workmanship, or a masterpiece in some translation, literally means like one of a kind work of art. Like some works of art, children can, can sometimes be hard to understand. While it sounds, no, uh, uh, it sounds noble, and just to treat all your kids the same, they are not the same. And you shouldn't treat them like they are. This starts by accepting their uniqueness completely. Why can't you be more like your brother? It's an unfair charge to make to a child. Why can't you be more like your brother? It's an unfair charge to make to a child. They have different gifts. They have different skills. They have different personality than their siblings. And they present unique challenges for us as parents to draw the best out of each one of them. One of the great tasks of parenting is to help kids recognize their own uniqueness. One of the great tasks for, of parenting is to help our kids recognize their own uniqueness. It's a bit like a pastor taking the congregations through shape class. Except this is not a three to four hours process, but a 20 year process. Your children are not carbon copies of you or anybody else. I repeat that. Your children are not carbon copies of you or anybody else. There are two enemies of uh, uniqueness that parents have to deal with. There are two enemies of uniqueness that parents have to deal with. Number one, comparing. The pressure to compare is everywhere. This has gotten worse today than it was 10 to 15 years ago because of social media. Not that we dare to classify or compare ourselves with some of those who are uh, co commending themselves, 
But when they measure themselves by one another and compare themselves with one another, try, they are actually without understanding. Yeah, Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12. Another, 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 another enemies of uniqueness that parents have to deal with is, is conforming. Worrying too much about what others think about you. Seeking the approval of others in, 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 is a trap. Romans 12, to, uh, 12 verse 2 says, Do not conform yourself to the world standards, to their values, to, to their value systems. Parents can also push their kids to conform. Not to biblical standards, but to the study habits or scholastic achievements or social norms. We must accept our children completely. We must accept our children completely. How do we know if we, 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 we've done that? We do not insist that they, 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 they be like us. They are not us. They are unique. They don't have to like the same food or music or pursue the same vacation or like the same sports, sports teams as us. God did not give us children to create clones of ourselves in the world. I repeat that. God did not give us children to create clones of ourselves in the world. They are unique, just like how we are unique. And we should enforce them to be like us. Apart from areas of spiritual disciplines, like what we see in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, our goal should not be to mold our children into our image, but to create a home atmosphere where they can become what God created them to be. Having said all this, accepting uniqueness does not mean accepting sinful habits or lifestyles. Having said all this, accepting uniqueness does not mean accepting sinful habits or lifestyles. Modern Western non-Christian society will say that gender being male or female, is fluid, and sexuality is a spectrum. Boys don't necessarily only like girls. It is these are not uniqueness to be accepted, but identity dysfunction to be disciplined. However, it's not a sin. To merely have some same is not a sin to imitate some good or positive lifestyles in others. But it is clearly a sin in both the Old Testament and New Testament to act on those attractions of same sex. See the other discussions about singleness. We are talking about a subtopic by the name bringing out the best in kids. Number one was Accept their uniqueness completely. Their uniqueness completely. Number two, affirm their, their value constantly. Affirm their value constantly. Yeah? We all crave affirmation. You can picture it as though each of us have a deep bucket where we store up affirmation and it cannot be filled. This is not about puffing up someone's ego, but everyone has a deep hunger to be believed in, to be trusted in, to be affirmed, and to be valued. We all need someone to communicate to us that we are important, that we matter to someone. 
this is distinct from accepting their uniqueness. This must be done con constantly. Picture it like, like a scale. Where pebbles can be deposited in either side. In the world, the negative side of the scale gets so many regular small deposits. You are not small enough. You are not attractive enough. You don't have a good mobile. Your family isn't good. Your case isn't the best. There are so many negative factors trying to tear our kids down. There are so many negative factors trying to tear out uh, our kids down. And when too much negative pets piled up on the negative side of the scale, that is called depression. Yeah. We need to balance the scale by constantly affirming their value and, uh, and, and reminding them of God's truth about them. They are loved and fearfully and wonderfully made for God's good purposes. Mm. The standard of being an affirming parent is our Father in heaven. Matthew 10, 29 and 31 explains that God even pays attention to sparrows. But we are vastly more valuable than, uh, to God than sparrows. Why are we so valuable? We are so valuable... Because God custom made you or made us. That shows your value. Psalm 139, 13 to 14. We are so valuable or you are so valuable because Jesus Christ died for you. You want to know how much you are worth? Look at the cross. First Peter 1.19 You are so valuable because God's Holy Spirit lives in you. First Corinthians tells us that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Trinity gives us value. The Father created us. Jesus died for us. The Holy Spirit chooses to live in us every day. That's where we get our value. The Father created us. Jesus Christ died for us. And the Holy Spirit chooses to live in us every day. That is where we get our value from. That brings me to session number three of God's wisdom for marriage and parenting. In session number four, we will continue talking about affirmation. As parents, how can we affirm the value of our children? You cannot afford to miss this one. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. God bless you all.